Um, I guess it's a, it's a very good initiative that, you know, a lot of companies are coming forth today to understand how to make the country and the city that we live in much more better. Uh, obviously, urbanization is going on such a high spring in our country and uh, the McKinsey report says that by 2030, India is going to need 30 million homes, which means the amount of urbanization infrastructure that we require in our country is enormous. And if we aren't able to make the city that we live in a comfortable place, then how are we going to actually manage the, the influx and the growth of this particular infrastructure? Well, infrastructure on one side, uh, one of the major things that we as a country is definitely is known for is our rich culture, our rich heritage. And I'm so lucky to be talking for Chennai because Chennai is one of the most culturally rich cities in our country. Uh, be it any kind of art tradition that you think of, I think Chennai has actually been leading in every every single arena. And today, I'm personally a dancer myself. And uh, when you go for the music and dance shows that happen in the in our city during the season time, most of the audience you see there are all people who are 50 plus. Which means what's going to happen in our culture in about 10 years time? The youngsters of today probably have to understand much more about the culture that we have inherited and how do we take it forward. I think that's something that we are missing as a, as a whole. And probably I think a lot more corporates have to come in, probably younger, right from school to the you know college. The younger adults have to be informed much, taught so much about what's our country, our heritage all about to take this forward. And only then can our culture survive. Because today if you see Western people are actually aping India. Uh, if you take the basic thing of yoga, which actually was born out of our country, it's gone all over the world. Uh, everything is like, you know, there, there's a rich root, a rich tradition, a rich culture that we have been having for, with us for a very, very long time. And if we actually lose the base of our heritage, then we are not, we are not Indians anymore. So I think one thing that Chennai as a city is losing is, personally, I have been seeing culture on the drop. Not that you ha should not be contemporary, you should be Western. Not that I'm denying that, but probably we have something which we own, which is ours and we are very proud that the, we belong to that particular, you know, uh, I would say that particular box of heritage. I think that's one area that we should really concentrate on and see what we could do. Uh, that's as far as the culture is concerned. If I take in terms of uh, uh, things like, like I think we've been talking about pollution, health, environment, hazards, etc. Safety is a huge thing. Uh, the traffic on the road is increasing. The roads are getting bad, the infrastructure development is not happening as far, as fast as we expect it to happen, which means obviously more vehicles are coming on the same roads and they're driving on the same roads. And what you see today is that people are losing patience, they're very impatient on the road and road safety is actually losing its essence. So how do we actually get people to, you know, to get more safe, be more safe on the roads? This is something where I think, the, I think corporates play a huge role because people flow. I mean, I work for an organization called Kone and we make elevators and escalators and we, of course, the job that we have is to make people flow smooth across either vertically, horizontally or diagonally. The same thing actually applies to a road also. People, are, you just stand on the road, you see people are just flowing all over. How can you make them more comfortable? Today, people are scared to even cross the road because of the kind of traffic that's there and in dangerous driving that people do. So can we as, an, can we as you know, corporate, better corporate citizens come up with defensive riding training for the youngsters of today? Probably that's one area that, you know, we aren't concentrating too much upon because we take it for granted. Probably these are areas that I think more of more people like us can actually do something to make a better and a comfortable ride on the road. That's as far as safety. If you take environmental hazards, of course, that's humongous. I'd like to quote a small example here of uh, Volkswagen. As an organization, they actually advertise that they, they don't talk about being the safest car, but they are linked to safety. Anything you read or see about Volkswagen is equal to safety. That's how they've been positioning themselves also. And of course, safety is not something that you can teach people. It actually has to ha come like a habit to you, you know. And what they have done is very interesting. They've actually gone and in, gone into creating fun in changing people's attitude. And that's actually worked for them. A, a small example could be that in the US, uh, there was a lot of garbage being thrown around in a particular park area. People weren't throwing it in the bin, which is very much that happens in our country also. And all that they did was that they actually put in a small musical instrument on top of the bin. The minute you drop a, a garbage into the bin, it gives you the feeling or the, the, the music that comes out is that it's going deep down and you know getting into some place. So because of the sound, people actually 
got to throw in things inside to just get experience the kind of you know music or the feeling they get when you throw garbage inside and the amount of garbage they collected went up 50 times than you know what it was earlier it's a very, very small example i'm telling you what i'm trying to tell you is that we have to actually change people habit the habit has to be changed and you can't educate people be it environment be it safety be it you know any other thing means of pollution